everyone I hope that you are all well happy Friday to you today is uh, the 1st of September for me it's a Thursday and I can't believe it's already September so today is meant to be a podcast I know it's meant to be a podcast the first Friday of the month is always a podcast the thing is I just kind of lost my knitting and crochet mojo this month which means I haven't knit or crocheted much in August uh, so very little progress was made on anything that I have been working on and I didn't really want today's podcast to be a repeat of last month's podcast because that's not interesting for anyone. So I might, um, I do feel the mojo coming back which is very exciting. So I might work on a few projects and maybe do something in a couple of weeks, if not I'll be back in October with another podcast which I feel like is a really long time but hopefully I'll have a lot to show you. Um, I've gone heavy on the makeup today, I am aware. We've gone for liquid eyeliner, which I haven't done in a really long time. My tummy is gurgling because I've just chugged quite a lot of water. But the sun appears to be shining, so I'm going to go and lift out the yarns that I dyed yesterday to see how dry they are and see if I'm dyeing yarn today or if I'm making stitch markers today because it all depends on how dry this yarn is because I don't have heaps and heaps of hanging space. I know, it's all very exciting. <laughs> So this is all the yarn that I dyed yesterday. It's not quite dry. Oh, you can see my camera shadow. Hello, my little microphone. Sorry, I just beat the microphone. That was stupid. Um, so this is Ellen, just here. It's a little bit damp. You just saw me flipping it all over. I did have the dehumidifier on all night, but it hasn't done much. This is Moloch, which I love this one. Quite autumnal. We've got, well, this was originally called Yes, I'm Very Sweet, and then I renamed it to Kiri the Kenku, but I might change it back to yes I am very sweet um, we have a new colorway which is war forged and I love this one so much it's very autumnal imagine like um, imagine like a robot that's been quite beaten up and is a bit rusty and a bit old that's what that's kind of inspired by we've got Craven Edge and a bit more down there classic and then we've got more Yes I'm Very Sweet on Fluff and on Sparkle. And then we've got Merfolk Lagoon on Fluff and Sparkle and on um, Sturdy Sock and Merino Sock. And now none of these are quite dry so I'm just going to leave them in the sun and um, have a bead weaving day instead. Because I don't want to rush it and then nothing dries. One of the reasons that maybe my dehumidifier didn't do as great a job, even though it had been on all night, is because I left a bucket of water in here and didn't even mean to. I rinsed off um, 16 skeins of Merfolk Lagoon yesterday whilst people were arriving for D&D. &D. I just wanted to finish it up. And uh, yeah, in my rush, I left the water from the spin dryer out. That would be why. That would be why it didn't do such a good job. Um, but the exciting news is I'm just trying to double check that there's no spiders around because there's a lot of spiders in this dye shed. Um, I have a bag of rubbish just down here that I started to clear away uh, bags into, like empty yarn bags into, uh, and then discovered a giant spider in amongst them. So I... Um, Oh, that's bright. So I stopped. 
and put the bag on top of it and was like, I'll deal with that another time. Um, but I have a list of yarn that I'm dyeing for Yarndale. And I've only got eight colours left on it, which is very, very exciting. I'm very much looking forward to being done with that list because then I can focus on Advents and I can focus on, please excuse the bright sunlight. Um, I can focus on Advents and I can focus on beading berries and yeah. But today is going to be stitch marker prep for Yarndale because I need to bead weave for Yarndale even though I've got like a hundred let me in about 150 berries to make Ooh. oh I shouldn't leave that door open actually right without further ado Kel's going on let's go make a cup of tea stuff that I actually need to bead weave of course we are starting off with rainbow sheep I feel like it's a pretty standard I've only got three of them to make I'm topping up my show stock for those who aren't aware and if you've pre-ordered the berries you might be kind of annoyed that I'm not beading berries but I am um, there is a six to eight week turnaround not 68 that would be mad six to eight um because of you know show prep advents the fact I've got to make almost 150 of them <laughs> Um, but I just wanted to bring up, I know the cost of everything has gone up. Now, I buy my black beads in 50 gram bags, 50 grams at a time. The bag that I've just finished, which was this bag, and I've just put all the stitch markers that I've made in it, because I've lost my little tub. It's somewhere upstairs in my pit that I call an office. These were £12.15. £12.15. Just bought some new ones last week. £17.50. Same weight. Eh. Cost of living crisis. Not that a bag of 50 gram beads increasing by five pounds something. I don't know actually, that's almost a 50% increase just under. That is quite shocking. Just saying, just saying. When it hits your craft supplies, it hits hard. to anyone else but before I ate my lunch I had filmed a clip of me talking about um, you know how insecure I was feeling with my business because they were other people <clears throat> who 
who had been in business for a short amount of time who were doing better than me. And it was a completely stupid, pointless thing, but I was just talking about how one of the difficulties of being uh, self-employed is having to deal with your own brain sometimes because it can trip you up, basically. Anyway, I was feeling incredibly insecure, blah, blah, blah. And then I went and made my lunch and ate my lunch. It was an omelette, cheesy, cheesy beanie omelette, in case you were curious. Delicious. It's kind of, I get kind of food obsessions. I don't know if this is a thing that everyone gets, but I get food obsessions where I eat the same thing for lunch until I'm absolutely sick of it one day and then I won't touch it for a very long time. But at the moment, the food obsession is cheesy beans um, in an omelette with salad on the side and salad cream. Ugh, it's amazing. Anyway, um, yeah, so I ate my lunch and then realised that my whole spiel that I'd done was absolutely pointless because the reason I was feeling particularly that way was because I was hungry. I mean, also, it is something that um, does sometimes bother me, but, you know, I don't need to speak about it or preach about it because it's my own, my own thing. But, um, yeah, it was stupid of me to feel this way. Well, no, feelings aren't stupid. But I was completely forgetting the success over last week's shop update already, is the point I was making. As I was making my omelette, I thought, why are you complaining that other dyers are selling thousands of skeins of yarn in a pre-order when you've just sold almost 150 berries that you now have to make? I was like, you know what, that's a really good point, omelette making me. So, um, yeah. Sometimes when I'm feeling that way, note to self, get a snack, get some lunch, chill out. It's not that big a deal. Other people can succeed and you can succeed just because someone else succeeds doesn't mean that you're not. Come on, brain. Stop self-sabotaging. It's not helpful for any of us. Because who defines success anyway? I do, it's my business. I own, the, I own this joint. The only person I have to impress is myself, which I think is partly the problem. I'm a people pleaser. I like to impress other people. I like to hear praise for my hard work. And um, you don't necessarily get a lot of praise working by yourself for yourself. Uh, sometimes the cats chirp in with something, but I don't think they understand what I do all day. And they don't understand why I can't just get up and chase them sometimes. Me so in particular. Um, but yeah, I can't remember the point I was making. Oh yeah. Yes. Come on, brain. Leave me alone, just for a second. Let me just get on with it. Let me bead weave and let me revel in a successful shop update without thinking about other people's more successful shop updates. Stupid brain. Okay, I kind of may have forgotten I was vlogging, but I have um, made the listing for the Nitty Grow Yarn Club, and that goes live in about 10 minutes or so. And I've been sat on my backside all day and the sun is shining so I'm going to go for a walk and you're going to come with me and it's going to be a lovely time so I'm going to put my headphones in I'm going to listen to a little bit of Volbeat and we're going to go for a walk
needed that walk very much. I was finding myself getting in a bad mood and usually when that happens it means I need to go outside. And I put the Songs to Cheer You Up playlist on that my sister and I have. It's an ever evolving and changing playlist of songs being added and taken away. It's a good one. So I was walking along and strutting my stuff and it was exactly what I needed. To start with I was grumpily walking and then after a couple of songs I was dancing as I was walking and it was perfect. Um, and just what, just what I needed to do. It's just sometimes, sometimes I just need to get outside and uh, enjoy the sunshine while it lasts. So I couldn't bring all the yarn in. I brought some yet. I brought some yarn in, but some is still wet. Or I don't know. I think I'm now in the depths of playing the game, cold or wet. Um, and I couldn't work out if it was cold or wet. So I've put it in the dye shed and put the dehumidifier on and hopefully it will dry because I'm going to dye some more yarn tomorrow and film that for the Patreon vlog on Monday. Um, next week's video is a bit of a different video because I'm not going to be here because I'm being bridesmaid at my friend's wedding and um, I'm heading southwards for a week or so so you're getting a different video next Friday. It's recorded, I just need to edit it but I'm likely going to do that this weekend. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to be consistent with my uploads, but you know, sometimes that's easier said than done. But um, yes, I'm very much glad I went for a walk. I was getting in my own head quite a lot. Um, the self-sabotage was real and I said it was just because I was hungry, but then the feelings crept back. So I think it was more that I was distracted by lunch because <laughs> then the comparison came back and it's, it's not good. Um, but it, yeah, it's frustrating because no matter how well I do, I always look at someone who's doing better and I compare instead of praising myself for absolutely smashing it and having a great shop update this past weekend. So yeah, it's a tough one. It is a tough one, but the Knit Roll, the Knit Roll Yarn Club is now live. Thank you to everyone so far who has placed an order. I'll keep it open for a week. Um, and then I'll be dying that up once I'm back in Nottingham. And then I'm here for the foreseeable future other than Yarndale. Other than that, I am here for the rest of my life. So it's been a slightly hectic couple of months, but I'm excited to see a bit of routine returning. Um, but yes, I've almost finished dyeing yarn for Yarndale. If I really, really push tomorrow, I might be able to finish it, but I don't want to make any promises to myself. Um, because yeah, and then when I get back from the south, I can just like smash out dying advent colours. Because everything happens at the same time, because of course it does. Of course it does. Um, but at some point I also need to celebrate my birthday, so who knows when that will happen. I will try and do a bit more knitting. I've seen um, Kat's Arachne sweater, Heather, Heather Hops. She posted a YouTube video about it. Yeah, the Arachne sweater by uh, Andy Satterland. And hers looks really good. If I click this, you might be able to see it. Look at it. She's got mohair. Focus on, focus on her. It's just so cool. I want one. I'll tag her video in the description. I haven't watched it, but maybe I will, because I really want to knit myself one. I also want to knit myself a um, sorrel jumper using Dreamweaver, and also I want to cast on the Sunday morning cardigan. I have a little giveaway to do for that. So Hannah of Yarnia Designs, she has a great name, her name is Hannah, um, has recently come out with a new cardigan pattern. I'll pop it here. And it is the Sunday morning cardigan and it's cabled cardigan knit out of double knit yarn and I think it's absolutely beautiful. And I messaged her when she said that the pattern was coming out and said I really need to knit this. And she messaged me and asked if I'd like to give away a copy of the pattern. And I said that would be absolutely delightful, thank you so much. So if you check the description box there's going to be a link to a Google, do a Google form um, for you to fill out and I will leave it open a week. I'll leave it open a week and um, yeah we'll get your email address for on the Google form 
and yeah Hannah will either email you the pattern or send it on Ravelry I will ask you to specify in the email in the Google form and yeah there'll just be a prompt for you to answer um, I think it will be let me think of it now what color would you knit the cardigan out of there we go because then you can help me pick my color because I don't know what color to pick I don't know I, can't, I was going to go grey, but I also I have a grey cable cardigan, so I should pick something different. And I should probably dye the yarn for it, it would be a good show sample. Um, also, I don't have a DK weight sweaters quantity in my stash at the moment, so perfect excuse. Um, yes, what colour would you knit your jumper? Fill in the Google form, and yeah. That's it, that's all that she wrote. Uh, just to reiterate, I will never ask any money in exchange for a giveaway ever 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 uh, double check if you receive an email from someone who appears to be either me or Yarnia Designs double check the email and double check with us if it seems sketchy if there's links in it that seem sketchy if there's anything in it that's asking you for money you will not be asked for money to enter this giveaway because I know that there are some sketchy sketchy scammy people out there and I don't want you to be scammily sketched sketchily scammed I had a little bit forgotten about that little giveaway I won't lie, my bad mood and walk distracted me, but I'm glad I did remember because I definitely want to cast one on and it's a really cool cardigan and yeah, she's made it out of the fibre fox yarn and it looks absolutely beautiful and squishy and like the perfect thing to snuggle up in and oh, I love it. So if you'd like to enter, please check the description box or I'll put it in the pinned comment as well because I'm it fit extra ease. I just had an idea for my next yarn collection. I don't know when it's going to be coming out, but how do we feel about the D and D library collection? All of the yarns inspired by the various books in Dungeons and Dragons. How cool would that be? Like a player's handbook, a monster manual, Volo's guide, Mordekainen's Tome of Foes, Dungeon Masters, um, Tasha's guide, the um, the Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Eberron, inspired by the covers. How cool would that be? Not like the special edition covers. We have one of the books that's a special edition cover and it's beautiful, it's really pretty, but it's not that interesting. So, uh, well, it, color, color wise, um, it's very interesting visually. I just hit myself in the nose. If that's something that you think that would be super good, super cool and that you'd be interested in, please let me know because I think that would be amazing. Anyway. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please uh, give it a thumbs up and share it with someone that you think might enjoy it. I don't know. I don't know if there is, but I'd appreciate it if you did. And uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you've been up to this past week. Is there anything you're knitting at the moment? What Are you knitting a jumper? Have you knit the arachne jumper? One of the things holding me back from the arachne jumper is the fact it's sport weight. And sport weight isn't a popular yarn weight in the UK, so I think it's going to be a pain in the foot to get the perfect yarn for it so um yes unless I just make it completely mohair who knows anyway um yes leave me a comment down below let me know if you're working on a jumper what are you working on all of that fun stuff are you coming to see me in Yarndale I don't know. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see me crop up in your life a little bit more, uh, please check out my Patreon. Link will be in the description box below and you get an extra video every single week. And um, yeah, it's always fun. You just get a bit more of my face or a higher frequency, mm, not higher frequency, whatever. You see my face a little bit more. And also in the description box are links to all of my social media if you would like to follow me on there. Obviously no pressure, but it would be lovely if you did. And subscribe. I post a video here once a week. And um, yeah, usually a knitting podcast once a month. But when you've got no knitting mojo, it's kind of tough to record a knitting, content, uh, knitting podcast. So thank you so, so much for watching. I have truly enjoyed spending my day with you. I'm about to go and edit this video because it's only half past seven. And I will see you very soon in my next video.